shit. Let me see. I guess I'll just... Yeah. Is that better now? Not yeah, me? now I can hear you. Oh, okay. I think I was dumb, and I <laughs> I forgot to unmute myself, dumb. <laughs> it's all good, man. I usually like to do that so that I, you know, any background No, <laughs> no, no, no. I get but, you. Um, I, I try to do the same thing. It's sometimes rough just to remember to undo it sometimes, so it's it's always a gamble. <laughs> But yeah, I but, feel uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, not too bad. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah. I mean, we've we've seen so many Batman movies, and right, it's hard to do they, anything new. I feel like with yeah, Batman. It's, yeah, it's kind of hard. Yeah, to kind of just get excited for like this next one. It's just like we've uh, seen well, Batman I mean, so many times. But I mean, if they can refresh it, do something new, then okay, then that'll be nice. But. Um, like you said, it, it, what else can they do? <laughs> no, absolutely. And and while I say that, there are obviously many, many people who are very, very excited for it. So, Definitely, you know, yeah. there there's nothing um, against them or against that uh, at all. Just, just, you know, I don't know. My personal thing, and once again, I know people are going to hate on it because uh, God forbid anybody have an opinion. Uh, but I just think it's bad casting, and it and not just um, Pattinson. Like, I think all around, like I think Andy Serkis is a bad choice for Alfred. I think I'm not a big fan so far of Zoe Kravitz for um, Catwoman. I think it's like a real uh, cop for um, kind of throwback to the Catwoman we got with, uh, fuck, who played it again? That's Halle Berry. Halle, Halle Berry, yeah. Which is cool, fine. I just didn't find either of those necessarily, like, that wasn't my favorite Catwoman. That was, I didn't think that was a great Catwoman either. So this coming in and being like that isn't very great for me. I think though what is what the problem is is it's a good Batman movie and story with what I feel are bad casting choices, right? So I think the movie itself is going to be really good, um, just like different uh, things in the movie look like it's well written and it's got a good plot probably. It does look like it's a bit tropey, like just a tiny bit, but nothing insane. I'd say it's reasonable you know what i mean uh especially considering once again we talked about it batman's been around for however long there's no doing a brand new batman movie you know what i mean no. you're, you're doing a no. rehash um from what i've been hearing that this one was supposed to be like more of a noir kind of take on batman style but we'll see it's, i um i'm not really kind of, getting that feel from it at all i'm not even yeah. a little bit but i could i guess i could see how people might but yeah i don't i don't feel that noir at all um, I mean, even if, well, but again, in my head, noir is 20s. Noir is the okay. 1920s, and you don't get to have bullet, full bulletproof armor in the 1920s or a souped up muscle, right? That's not noir. I'm sorry. Uh, just like you can't say it's steampunk and then do a bunch of modern day technology. That's just part of the style is the technological era. You could do a noir mix, I guess. But honestly, it seems more like a... Uh, someone, I'd seen someone describe it like that, uh, like a Saw uh, kind of story. Where, right, with the Riddler, like, playing this big game in the background and manipulating people and being this horror serial killer. Like, you saw the, the clip where it's, like, serial killer live on stream. It's like, yeah, that plays into a lot of those mental, psycho psychological horror kind of, like things but yeah i don't know once, once again i still just seeing even seeing this footage uh it looks like it'll be a pretty decent movie i'm just still not a fan of the casting and i don't think my opinion is gonna change having seen yeah. there hasn't been yeah. enough acting of him on screen for me to give a big take on the acting but what i've seen so far has definitely not changed my opinion okay yeah, yeah. I, he's done some pretty good movies i've actually changed my mind on him since a lot since I mean, uh, twilight days and that, uh, that's cool but character casting is half of an actor unfortunately you can pretend to be the hulk but if you're playing the hulk physically you need to look mm -hmm. like lou ferrigno and I feel like he doesn't, especially as Bruce Wayne, like seeing his Bruce Wayne now, I think is even worse than what I saw earlier, where he literally looks like an emo teenager when he's Bruce Wayne. 
but that's yeah well we'll that's definitely have to watch it though yeah. and see because just because the trailer really can't give us too much just right. yet but like you say all the time you know no it's just uh, a trailer costume. yeah and until yeah. you get to the movie there's no telling and and once again as much as i don't like the care like the character choice still or the uh, actor choice that doesn't mean he can't do a good job that just means yeah. i don't like right that's that's a totally that's like not liking spaghetti that doesn't mean spaghetti's bad means you don't like spaghetti <laughs> you know what i mean but yeah we'll have to definitely check it out and see what the what they'll do with a different take on it and yeah how this how will you, be kind of a so, different batman movie so beyond the robert pattinson stuff how do you feel about andy circus as alfred because that's actually bu- bugs me more than robert pattinson i think that's a terrible you know cast. andy's starting to kind of get more into the acting roles and I, stuff it's not um, even the acting i, I just he, think that's a bad role for him I yeah, I don't him. know. That, like I, I said, yeah. I like his acting. I liked him as Claw. I, every time he shows up, whether voice acting or regular acting, I like Andy Serkis. Every I time. I didn't even know he... Uh, well, actually, I did, but I, I totally forgot about that. But he he had He's directed huge. the uh, Venom movie, too. He Venom also too. helped direct... Um, uh, he directed that because of mocap, but he also helped direct the... Yeah, uh, he's a the, big mocap guy, yeah. But he also helped direct the new Lord of the Rings, uh, the trilogy with the hobbit he helped direct that um, oh did he okay, yes see, yes I he did like i said i'm a huge andy circus fan i love andy circus I, yeah, I think this I is know, a guess, bad role for him just my opinion yeah yeah because I, I guess like you said you were mostly seeing an older alfred or different i don't know yeah i guess we'll just have to see what he's gonna do too on his take right of a yep. different kind of it's, it's for sure the role he you know he's not gonna play the normal Alfred no he I, and yeah. that's and that's kind of what i'm wondering is because like even seeing him it looked like he had some scars or dan or fresh damage one or the other uh, just watching him as i went through because i didn't know he was alfred until i actually someone didn't know said until this. you said something right now. no no <laughs> so yeah I did not- yeah he shows up in the trailer i only know because somebody i saw it in like uh one of the descriptions of like the new batman whatever it's like with Robert Pattinson is this, and then Andy Serkis is Alfred. I'm like, what? I remember seeing, hearing that. Well, yeah, I'll have to watch that trailer again because I definitely wasn't looking for his face or anything. So no, I must yeah. have just totally forgot. And then, too, like you said, uh, for an Alfred, I see an older Alfred, so I must have just really must have passed him up because I, yeah, just was well, not paying attention. And, and to be fair, <laughs> Andy Serkis isn't that old, I don't think. What is he, 60? No. 50? I don't even I don't, know. I don't even think he's even that old. I want to say he's probably like 40 something years old. Mm, I think he's a little older than that. He's, I mean, and, it, think about it. He was fully grown acting in the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. That's yeah, 20 years ago. So he's minimum 40. Yeah. Uh, I want to check, but I, I don't think he's really super old. Not saying he can't play someone very old. No, no. Oh, no, he's fine, actually, I... he's 57. Okay. I, okay. I thought he was closer to 50. You know what I mean? Just out of his 40s is what I would figure. Yeah. Because um, he was already an established mocap actor before doing Lord of the Rings. He's he's done all kinds of stuff. He's great. And that's where I kind of just know, remember him was doing that. And he did the or not like of the mocap, stuff. Um, yep. Yep. He does. A, I mean, he's awesome. Facial and, and voice. And, and even just, like I said, in his acting roles, he's great. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen anything I don't like Andy Serkis in, which actually gives points to the new Batman. Like, this guy Andy Serkis in is two to one. I'm gonna like it, just mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Just uh, statistically. Just, yeah, you just still can like still a little like hmm, I don't know about that that part for him, but we'll see. I guess. Once again, uh, <laughs> and here's the most important thing I always say when doing these ones, where I'm like, oh, I don't like this idea going up. Just like everything else, this is having said this not seeing the movie so he there's every possibility i see the movie and he does absolutely amazing and same with robert pattinson and i'm just like that was the best batman ever yeah there's he did an okay yeah. voice from what i heard from what i heard a little bit at least he's not doing the, the christopher nolan work. yeah i guess <laughs> i actually like that more because let's let's be honest the whole voice changer thing is like gonna get fucked up no matter what you do in a fight like audio equipment in the middle of a fight especially the shit batman does going down more makes more sense that he just changes his voice honestly it's something that if you practice and actually did it well not like christopher nolan Uh you can you can make yourself sound super different uh i don't know if you can make yourself sound like but you know 
yeah, yeah. so it, it sounded okay though from what i was hearing no, so yeah, well yeah. i guess um like i said it, we'll it, find, it, see what happens yeah. there there was a bunch of other stuff they released besides oh, yeah. i guess that was flash, more besides Batman. black adam um, yeah we got to see some flash and you actually uh from what i was hearing it sounded like uh michael keaton's voice in there a lot of people were saying. everybody he's been confirmed he got confirmed in the flat yeah Which this is, is cool. in news i was really that's that it, was really well, cool to see it's killing me because people are like oh this and i was like Nobody pays attention to DC. They announced last year that he was mm -hmm. officially signed on to be Batman in the new Flash movie. Like the only, yeah, the only thing I heard was uh, last thing I heard was about the um, when he did that. Uh, was it that DC CD, uh, CW? Uh, uh, like I, yeah, I forgot about that. But yeah, it wasn't too long after that where he had. But once again, I keep up. I know I like harsh on DC sometimes, but I keep up on it because I like DC and I want to see them do well. And that's why, like, I like a lot of the stuff where people are like this and this. Like the Andy Circus one was big news for me, but I'm sure they had released it before, and I just was more focused on Robert Pattinson and Zoe Kravitz than on Andy Circus at that point. But uh, for the other ones, like I pay attention to when they say the new Flash stuff is going on, when they're gonna let Black Adam, what's going on with Aquaman two. You know, uh, the Suicide Squad stuff, the piece. I love DC stuff. I just wish they'd get their ish together and come together right now over comics. But no, uh, legit. I think it's um, I think it's interesting to see that they're finally, it seems, getting things in motion, right? Like they have multiple projects seem to be pushing through. They look like they're going to be pretty good, all of them, even the ones I don't like look like they're gonna do really well right or I, that i might not like look like they're gonna do really well and that's great like i want to see D like i i bash them because i want to see them do better i wanted them to have their if not a connected universe consistent release universe right it's cool don't connect everything have three different batmans but keep them good maybe just write good movies man i mean we we've had S spider-man sony and universal separate for like half of their existences you know what i mean where it's just like well, are we gonna let x-men over for that nah it's cool just write an x-men movie franchise <laughs> like that it's cool if you if you don't do the justice league fine just do a batman franchise a, a full three movie good batman franchise that's all i want and it and no matter who's the main character as long as you do it well i'll be happy and it looks like they're well, doing that. Well. Yeah. So there, yeah, there was a oh, quite a few characters in that Black Adam. Uh, yeah, they had a... Doctor Fate. Uh, what was that? Adam? What was it? Adam? Something I can't remember. I always forget. Um, I think it's Adam. Um, not Savage, but uh, uh is this, it's uh, yeah, I can't remember. But yeah, there was a but, lot of great stuff. Yeah, there was yeah some cool little characters that are see some new DC characters I've never seen on live action. So there was yeah. that. I know we got to see the first Naomi uh, CW show. I never really watched the shows, but I thought it was really cool to kind of see that she's actually getting a TV show after I'm... I think what was it three years since the first yeah. issue came out for her. Yeah, it's it's um, been a while for sure. Um, I will say that uh, it's something that DC. I don't know whether it's because the shows are really good. Or because the contracting is that Warner also owns CW. That could be it too. I think a lot of people for once. well, I think a lot of people forget the Warner Brothers, right? Is but whatever. It's the same thing as like Disney putting out Disney shows on its Disney streaming platform. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, I think it's important to remember some of that. But I also think that they do a really good job at the at least usually at the start of doing well on their comic characters for their TV shows. DC has done pretty well on their TV comic side. I won't, I don't feel like they've done excessively well because I feel like they, um, stretch it out too much. They, just, they put too many seasons down. Yeah. That's what I say is like, it's too, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like no, after was, full, so after much. five and six seasons of arrow, it's like, I'm good. I'm all right. Yeah. Even if I like it, that's a lot to watch of a multi-connected universe of stories. Like, <laughs> you know, it, I and like it, the way Disney's doing, you know, they're just saying, hey, we'll do one and done, and it connects into the next movie. 
or and once, if it does yeah. no good, maybe we'll do a second one because people are yeah. loving it so much, and we can maybe push in another one to write into the right. Other but they, more. but <laughs> they, they prioritize story in a lot of cases or movement of product, which is which is important. I think a lot of people forget how important it is to write. Uh, you know, uh, it's the whole I launch Wonder Woman the same day they launch. Uh, Avengers or whatever that's not what the actual ones were I'm just saying that's the kind of strategy where it's like okay well you do that but then you're risking flooding the market and not getting your product seen and yeah you might hurt the competition but you're probably hurting yourself roughly as much or somewhat as much so you're just you want to shoot for a little separation so you have one product here then another product as opposed to well I'm just gonna make this because it's I need quick cash and it's a it's a money grab essentially you know what i mean and not not saying everyone does that but it's pretty popular to do in television you know what i mean just uh so yeah. let's see um i know there was a couple other stuff we got to see a little bit i think they showed some blue beetle or the is it the blue beetle or the, yeah they gave i think some concept stuff for him i don't know if they did a full thing but yeah you're thinking of uh what's the name something reyes um jamie reyes jamie reyes I think blue so, yeah yeah but i've always liked uh that character because of you know from the young justice show so he was kind of a cool character to always watch on there um i know that they well so they were talking about a couple other things that were announced there so we did the flash oh so the flash movie did they say what that what's the title called did they say what the um, title was is it flashpoint basically this movie i really hope it's not flashpoint yet it's too fast it's but that, i kind of um, i kind of felt like flashpoint vibes from the trailer and well then yeah I, that that for sure. Uh, what, would you, what would you think of Michael Keaton playing as uh, Batman? As uh, I know he's not, not Batman, Wayne, but, but uh, yeah. he's still Thomas Batman. Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, that's the other thing too. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Uh, they showed us some behind the scenes of that so that's coming out shazam fury of the gods is the title of that new one yeah um they only showed some behind the scenes but didn't give us a trailer for that one either Let's see. Yeah, i'm just looking at some other things because there was a couple things they didn't even show trailers for um some things they were just showing yeah like you said just concept art um i think that might have been it just the blue beetle and then just those other two I just said, had said now, and I think, yeah, I can't see anything else. Yeah, it's just called The Flash so far. Okay, it's The Flash. Which, okay. I mean, so makes sense because he hasn't had. I know some people were kind of saying that's what it was going to be, but it, I don't know. It, yeah, like I said, not confirmed it, yet, so. It just makes sense that he hasn't had another movie. Why would you do another movie name without giving him his title? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because they've done uh, the TV show, but as far as well, it's it's like it would be like doing um, vengeance or some shit instead of the Batman. You know what I mean? And, and that's even even with the excuse that we have even more on Batman, but just that general idea of like it's not like uh, there have been a bunch of Flash movies so that they can jump right into Flashpoint. I, I think it's a good idea, uh, as opposed to doing like Captain or. <laughs> The Flash, Flashpoint, Captain America, Civil War. Like, I've, it, it was okay for Cap because it was his second or whatever movie or third movie. But for his first one, I don't think it was a good idea. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, let's see. Oh, the Super Pets trailer came out. <laughs> I thought it was funny, too, because they have Kevin Hart and uh, yeah. playing Ace. And then they have Crypto yeah, was... as the, the Rock. <laughs> so, yeah, it was they, they, work to, they work together pretty good. So they we'll do. see how that I've... goes. They do. I'm a little up and down with the whole celebrity voice actor thing because it's been so all over the place. And I like it for certain things, but I don't like it for certain other things. So, like, I like it for original titles, like when they did the other one, Pets at Home or whatever, where he, that Kevin Hart's also in. Yeah, he was in there too. He was that, the, the bunny rabbit. Yeah, that was great because they're basically voicing characters who have never been done in any way. And they have no personality, right? Like, they do have a personality, but they have no established voice persona kind of things. And not saying that Crypto or any of them have voices, because obviously they're animals. But they have long histories in the comics to give them personalities, right? Where it's like, like, Ace is like Batman. He's very stoic, dog, very, 
like trained very and whereas crypto is a little more just kind of like your common house dog with ultra superpowers he's very chill yeah? and and even to the point actually crypto did have his own com cartoon and voice uh tv show i forgot about that yeah there was for a little bit yep and actually probably because of that ace probably also has a voice because i almost guarantee you ace showed up in one of those episodes I, I, I don't remember. I'm just going off of basic logic. Um, what else was uh, announced? Like, there was just That's a few last point. things that they had announced. Was Oh, uh, some of the video game stuff. So they did give to show us a, a Gotham yeah, Knights, and yeah. they gave us the story trailer. So they kind of gave us a little bit. They're doing the Court of Owls thing. Um, Which is cool. And then the Suicide Squad, we also kind of got like a story trailer. As yeah, well, Suicide Squad kills the Justice League, right? But it looked good. I mean, it looks fun. Here's I wanna, the thing. They do a good job, I generally. So. I want to check out a... And it's rock steady, so... Yeah. I think they'll do a good job on that one. Once again, DC uh, just generally has done a good job on the video games. It's, it's basically the one real... Oh, no. It's one of the areas where they, they can really claim, like, dominance is, like... They do video games better than Marvel. And they have for 20 years. Um, and it, you know, I, yeah. um, I finally got to try the Marvel game. Oh, you just made, tried uh, it? Yeah, I finally well because it's on Xbox Game Pass. Oh, so it's I, uh, on the Pass finally, now. Okay, yeah. I checked it out, but uh, you know I actually like it. I th but I think you know that a lot of people are starting to like it again. I heard it kind of came back from well, they, they finally expanded fixed a lot it. Of the, yeah, yeah, that they expanded. They fixed a lot of the bugs and things that people are complaining about. So um, yeah, when I was playing it, it was kind of kind of fun here. It's it's you cool. Know. It you know, and I think it's their problem is marvel it's the exact opposite of marvel and dc so marvel right was very good about planning their video game or not video game movie empire that moved forward pushed characters and good progressions of solo movies etc combos um dc basically did the same thing with video games every every you know the dc characters got good solo video games superman batman you know uh that's pretty much it but that you know they then they move towards combination games whereas marvel did the exact opposite in the video games and dc did the opposite in movies where marvel was like well fuck all these solo games we're gonna just get guardians and avengers out because they're our popular titles and uh you know dc was like yeah for video games you know or movies we're gonna do the same thing we're just gonna fuck it and throw it all out there just back back then they're doing better now i like what they're doing now where it's I'm not see that they're, do, they're yeah. doing what i said which is like every character is getting their movie and they didn't rush into another combo movie no yeah yeah uh, a lot of the early uh, the only games i really like from marvel which is that they really focused on mostly was just spider-man games yep Yep. Those are always fun. I used to love the 90s Spider-Man game oh, when yeah. it first came out. That was so mm -hmm. cool doing the web slinging. Yeah. And, um, and arguably and better then, than the DC games of the time, but... Yeah. But, um, yeah. And then also, too, even the Spider-Man movie game when it finally came out. It was pretty good. Um, alongside. Those are actually pretty fun there. Yeah. The I, new, I really new did, ones or the old Spider-Man movie games? Because the, the new yeah, Spider-Man... the first one with the Sam Raimi ones. Yeah, when those Yeah, those are out, pretty those good. Are, they were all right. Yeah. 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 Really always enjoyed those. Those are always fun. They were never um, like big sellers, then, but they were fun to play. And then a couple of the like um, Edge of Time Verse or something like that. Those other Spider-Man games were like yeah. kind of more comic. It was always Spider-Man. -like. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, I've always liked their Spider-Man games. Well, that's because that was fun, basically but... <laughs> all they made. I think they had one Punisher game, a uh, couple Wolverine games, and one or two Deadpool games. Deadpool Everything. game, which actually wasn't I, too bad, too. You know what? I, I actually want to see, because there's probably more, but let's see. Marvel video games. Let's see what they got for their entire list. Uh, oh, you're looking that up. Um, did you see the uh, footage of um, the monsters? I did, yeah. It was pretty interesting. Yeah. Oh well, no! You know, I didn't see I'm the footage. Excited. I just saw a screenshot or whatever. Uh, yeah, well, it was just the. Uh, yeah, they showed uh, Henry and they showed uh, her, his wife, and then the grandpa, the Dracula character. He's got some really like outrageous looking like uh, like mustache kind of going on here, and then uh, I'm really excited who's playing Henry Monsters. I, I didn't know this, but it was Jeff Daniel Phillips. And oh, that's really? the guy who plays, yeah, from Raymond. Yeah. Um, and I was reading up on it, but I guess he's uh, he's really like a huge, huge, like a uh, Henry Monster fan. 
and he w really wanted to play this role and uh, he actually even played him in um, an episode of uh, Raymond. <laughs> so uh, I guess that, that works perfectly and he's pretty tall. He is a tall dude so that will go perfectly for all that as well. Uh, yeah, but definitely. the only one that was a little, not disappointed, but it's just like, I guess it was going to happen anyways, was um, was his wife being casted as the wife. <laughs> Which is, I guess, is, I kind of should have knew a, it was going to It's happen. a cultural thing, man. It's a dual. Which is fine. Yeah. I mean, it's fine. But honestly, bro, she doesn't really act that great. <laughs> <laughs> she's, I don't know. She's to not me, there to act just... great. She's there to look great. <laughs> <laughs> So, I don't know. That's, know. that's the only one that was a lit. But we'll see. Maybe she may do a good. Uh, like I said, I haven't seen it yet. So, she may end up doing good. Or I, we all may end up not liking her as the as the wife. But we'll see. Hey, we'll man, see statistically, how it all ends up. someone's got to like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, but, uh, <laughs> I looked yeah, at it. And they, they also showed the house. Sorry, the house to the oh, 13, yeah, yeah. 13 Mockingbird. Oh, in yeah, the yeah, background. yeah. Sorry. We get to see the house of what they're going to be uh, shooting in. So it actually looks great. The house looks great as well. Um, the only yeah, thing I, I uh, care about is cousin it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what's up? What were you going to say? Uh, I was saying I had looked into those uh, video games. I guess they've had more video games oh, yeah. than I gave them credit for. Yeah, I know they had a lot of Nintendo games I used to play too back in the days. Um, the the thing is, I, what I said before still stands in the sense that a lot of them are combo games as opposed to solo games. It's, yeah, like I so said, now they're starting to get more into like now we're going to get that Wolverine game. Um, what was the other one that they announced? They announced another. Oh, yeah, but that was like a more turn based RPG game. Yeah, Midnight Suns well, not or not something a fan else. Yeah. Turn based games, but I'm, I enjoy I'm them, pretty but sure it's a lot of people are excited for that one. <laughs> yeah, the, t the, the, you know, the uh, turn based community is, but everybody else doesn't. Well, like some Marvel people do, because it does have a lot of people from the Marvel Universe. They got a lot of licensing for all those characters, so that was cool, but other than that, uh, I mean. Yeah, I'm just looking at them, right? Like, there's there have been games, but I'd say that the popularity of these games in comparison is it's it's rough too, because like then some of like a lot of Marvel stuff is like comboed with Capcom, right? So like then you got to kind of share too, that, but, and they yeah. are, but yeah, but they're comboed, so you kind of got to like split the the credit there. Uh. Besides that, I mean, we've had a lot going on with uh, DC Fandom, uh, Flash, Black Adam. I mean, yeah, we pretty yeah, much talked about it. On. Peacemaker yeah. trailer Peace finally got yeah, showed. Yeah, the Fulls trailer this time with the Hug and Eagle. Um, <laughs> no, it looked good, and I, I liked it. I'm, I'm excited for all these movies. Once again, I think after, unfortunately, well, and they haven't really, like, and that's, that's the thing that I'm cool with is, like, they haven't really, like, gotten rid of snyder they just kind of have him on hbo now so that's where snyder's verse is going to be or whatever if they do go with that i don't know and i really don't care but what i do like is that they've moved forward with what is essentially a actual more to a two character production for people where it's like yeah we're gonna write shazam like shazam should be written not like a brooding self-reflecty version of himself right an ultra realistic right. No, these are superhero movies. No one wants ultra realism in superhero movies. That's right, right. It's, um, it's, it's a little. Well, I guess that's not true because then you have stuff like The Boys, but yeah, those those it, end up yeah, pretty, pretty some good movie uh, show right true. there. And Although what's, what's another one that's kind of like that too? More Invincible realism. is uh, another well, one that's you like can't that. Put it in that, yeah, that as well. Where it's more of you know, not it's not like all fun and games at the end of the day is like real political and philosophical moral standpoints inside of the arguments which is fine and is cool but uh especially when you do like the super dark twists like the boys and in invincible they don't last long uh it's really hard to continue writing stories like that how about that um for lots of reasons there's a reason that the current formula is what it is and right, has right. basically been for 60 plus years let's see and uh so i guess to go like four movie TV show related things here before we can I guess we move on to some comics real quick here. Yeah, yeah. Um, was the um, if anybody hasn't seen the new Chucky show did come out and the original creator Don I think is his first name has uh, doing everything for this one so this, this is his work. Um, original actors in here 
Um, it's really good. First episode, I really enjoyed. I heard a lot of good things from a lot of Chucky fans also enjoying it. Um, so I think it's going to be a really good show. First episode did good. Um, we're getting another uh, How to Train Your Dragon, but it's going to be a series, but this will take 1300 years after the movies. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a totally different How to Train Your Dragon kind of stuff going on there. Um, another thing was the screen trailer actually just dropped uh, yeah, a few days ago. Yeah, I saw that one. Um, uh, and that actually looks pretty good. We're getting some, ori- right? <laughs> We're getting some uh, original actors from the first ones to come back in as well. So that's cool to see some old faces. Um, but yeah, the the actors who are playing it saying this is going to be really wild, kind of crazy movie for sure. And they're, they're, they're really excited to have everyone see this new um, screen movie. But uh, it looks good. I did like the trailer. Uh, last two things. Oh, actually, last three things here. Sorry. It was the trailer dropped for a new Home Alone. But it's like a it's a British take on oh. it. <laughs> British. <laughs> so he yeah, he's got a British accent. <laughs> um, so yeah, we got that. And it's basically literally home alone, as we know it. Um, you know, there's nothing really too different about it, you know, just same things that we come to know home alone about to be. <laughs> but uh, they're kinda keeping to the original. Uh, there is a scene that I actually kind of want to see how that's going to happen. They did, you know, how he does the, um, I can't remember. It was one of the scenes, but they do like a Scarface scene. They show really quick in the trailer. Yeah. And the kid's kind of like sticking his nose in the Skittles and he's wearing even like a Scarface looking <laughs> suit. So, um, they're kind of playing back a little bit on some older, uh, yeah, which of I've, the original here, which but it's cool. I'll, yeah. We'll check it out. Yeah. Well, I remember. Mean, Twelfth is the the release day for that one. Yeah, and I mean it's pretty common, I think, for those kind of shows to do that, where they um play back on nostalgia. Just right. you know, it's a good right. idea for one marketing wise, but also just uh, in the sense that you know uh, they'll get old viewers while kidding or keep old viewers while getting new viewers. I think the new Halloween did that as well. Um, I just finished that one too. If anybody has Peacock Premium, you guys can watch oh, that nice. for free on there. But uh, it wasn't too bad. No, yeah. um, it was, we're it still w- getting one more Halloween after this too. Yeah, tri- a third. Yeah, which it makes sense. They kind of yeah said it that it way. And yeah. and once again, I, I think the funny thing is like, and my friend said that he's like, you know, they they really have to put comedy in these new versions of these movies because after 40 years no one takes him as seriously as they did once and if they don't play off that they're going to come off just a little rough because even the new jasons and freddies did that where they kind of like joking about oh are you afraid of this or that you know what i mean where it's like that's what was cool about freddy yeah for sure was freddy had a personality and jason and michael kind of were just like yeah which is totally (laughs) fine because you can then you just use them for different kind of because there was a ton of humor in the new one like i I, yeah no no there yeah there is there's a couple yeah there you know that is right they do i do notice that now a lot of there is a little bit of the humor here and there unless it's eli roth and then you go yeah he wants to go really (laughs) yeah which is yeah which is cool and sometimes it works but realistically those are a lot harder to do i think um both from a writing stance and a thematic stance of like it's it's tougher to stay dark the whole time and be effective in being scary and ominous and uh drawing the mean whereas uh it's easier to do ups and downs right in a typical thing where it's like all right i want them to be scared and then i'll let them laugh a bit so that they're not scared and then i'll get them scared again and then I'll laugh a bit so that they're not scared. And it is a bit of a cop out, right? So you don't have to be as scary or get as deep and dark. But yeah. it, it's a it's a way to make kind of like that 80s, I feel like, horror movie where it was just like, run you dumb bitch. Ah, he gonna kill you. Oh. But no, so the last two things, uh, sorry, I was gonna bring up was um, I, one of the biggest things, because I know uh, James Abram was talking about like, hey, the. Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special oh, yeah, was going to be something big that. and it was going to bring a special character which I kind of we all probably really assumed who that was going to be right Yeah. and they just released that Will Poulter is going to be casted as yeah, Adam Warlock I'm not 100% on that casting either I'm, I'm going to be you think honest so? I, you know I haven't seen him in a bit so in my head he's still the kid from the Millers but 
he's dead. You know, I, so, and I made a mistake. <laughs> I, I mistake. I, I put him as the, uh, you know, uh, from uh, the new Star Wars Jedi Fallen. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what's his name? Oh, I don't what's the, remember. The, the Jedi. He's... I can't remember the Jedi. Yeah, yeah. Name. But I know anyways, what you're talking about. I, I like I that. I thought that was Will, and there, but then somebody came in. They're like, no, bro, that's the guy from Seamus. Like, oh yeah, you're right. That is a different redhead kid. They all yeah. look the same. I'm sorry. They do. They do. <laughs> yeah. And I like the kid from Seamus. I'm not saying I don't like. He's uh, good. No, he's good too. Yeah, he does good. a very good job of yes. acting. But yes. um, yeah, definitely. After I was like, oh yeah, they're. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Will you know, they do the long hair route? Will they go the short hair route? Because I, I, he's done some other movies that I have seen that I do like him in. Like, um, let me look him up here. Um, I was actually looking up his stuff, and I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, he did play some of those movies. I forgot he played. Oh, you know what? Also, too, he was actually uh, one of the first people that got casted to play the Pennywise reboot when they were starting that all up. Oh, yeah. And uh, once they lost their director, which I think was the true detective guy director, oh, okay. he was going to, uh, he had dropped out. And then when he dropped out, then he dropped out as well. Um, but yeah, so that, that, that that's kind of a cool little fun fact that he was up there. Yeah, that's where I seen him too, was in Maze Runner. Um, so he was cool. He was uh, okay in those movies. Um, yeah, I know you're. He's no, in no, the, no. We're the, uh, we're the Millers, I know, no, in yeah, too, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. The, my um, thing is, and here's my question is to myself, but also to other people if they're watching, is not recognizing somebody through their acting a compliment, like a good thing for their acting, or a bad thing in like regards to acting? Because like theoretically, right, the perfect actor would be someone you'd never recognize. Because they're acting so well, you don't recognize them, right? <laughs> but then also, that's bad for them because if you can't recognize them, you don't know who they are. They're not gonna get. They can't get enough attention to get another role. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's just one of those things I just thought about. It, so I'm wondering: is he a really, really good actor, or a really, really forgettable actor? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, which one is it? Because like I, I've seen design, those yeah. and I just don't remember him in there. And now when you say it, it's like, oh yeah, I guess he was right there and there. But it's just interesting. And and I feel like I yeah. I don't know. This role could even you know oh yeah get it, him into where he needs to. And, Sometimes that's all these stars need, right? Oh just yeah, have one role to and, to change their whole. <laughs> and here's and here's my thing going into it. The way I'm thinking about it. So like personally. I'm very doubtful. I'm probably more doubtful of this casting than the Robert Pattinson casting. <laughs> easily. Easily. At least I felt like Robert Pattinson I could recognize as a actor yeah. and like a no offense to the to the other guy, he's way more famous than me, obviously. But um So here's and here's my logic and it's funny because I see a dichotomy between them. Where it's like, all right, so I think that, but I also n trust Marvel's casting a lot. Like, they are very good at it, and they've basically not picked a character cast that I can think of off the top of my head where I was just like, bad, bad casting. The only one I can I can only say is that I just, I never was ever a fan of Mark Ruffalo as Hulk. I'm sorry. Eh, I, I could never get behind that one. I, I just like, don't know why. I like you know him better than all the I've previous Hulks. I've seen him in, I've seen him in so many like rom-com oh, like, yeah, movies. Oh yeah, like, yeah. And take him very and, serious. Like and he for was me, in 13 going on 30. Yeah, and for me, he I never saw spot. any of the other movies he'd been in. So came in fresh. Never see, saw so 13 like, go, like any, name any of the rom-coms he'd been in. Didn't see him. <laughs> yeah, see, that's, that's all I see him as uh, sometimes. Yeah. Like, I never really think and, him as like this brutish kind of, I yeah. don't know. And for me, everybody uh, else is like, wow, Edward Norton was a perfect Hulk. And I was like, I think Mark Ruffalo he was okay. is he yeah. was pretty good. So far, Mark Ruffalo is the, like, none of them are any good, honestly, like, as far as being Bruce Banner or being the Hulk. But as far as it, my opinion is, Ruffalo is probably the best depiction of Banner we've ever gotten. Um,. I never felt like Norton did it, and the first guy just—I don't even right. know. Um, I, and then I guess too, I just don't see Mark as like when he's un, you know, un Hulk. I can't see him as like a good Bruce to me sometimes. Because like again, I said, like I said, that I've seen him in roles, and I don't—I've never seen him as like that. He's never played the intelligent, kind of smart, kind of like you know, ever. I don't know. But uh, again, yeah. uh, that's why it was just to me, it was like that, like right field kind of casting for me on that one. Because I was like, oh wow. Well, hmm. He's done some very unique, different roles, but this will be very different. <laughs> yeah, so, I yeah, that, that's the same thing. Like when the 
what's his name uh, was casted in Godzilla. I couldn't take him serious either. Uh, Brian uh, Kristen or Kristen or uh, from Malcolm in the Middle. Oh, the Cranston? Oh, I'd seen yeah. Breaking Bad, so yeah, I could totally and take him seriously. And you see, and I've heard a lot of good things he's good in that one. But oh, like amazing. After, 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 actually, that's why I don't watch Breaking Bad is because all I see is... <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I've seen sometimes. I've seen Malcolm in the Middle like ten times the whole series. Like me and my brother watch it on repeat. He's just really good in that in Breaking Bad. He's such a good actor. I just can't. Uh, I've heard I've heard he's good. It, yeah, really like good. I said, it's easily his best performing role ever. No no question. No hands. None of that. That's that's his best thing he'll ever do. <laughs> he's never gonna top that one, bro. I haven't seen him get even close in anything else. I don't know if he was made for that role. I don't know why he was so good at selling meth, but <laughs> he was, man. He was. No, yeah, but yeah, I. I yeah. That's kind of just uh, other than that, but um, yeah, and, I'm just looking at I'm looking at Mark Ruffalo's other movies. Like, yeah, see, like this other movie, Apartment Twelve, is a never rom -com seen it. Movie, yep. um, committed. Nope, never seen it. Goes my baby. Never seen it. Yeah, like. Yeah, <laughs> like I said, I've never seen any of them, so like I can't comment on them. That's what I was saying. I was like, it was really weird to see him. I guess to me, it was just yeah. I was gonna say you've seen all his movies, so you have a very strong opinion and picture of him in your head already. But yeah, so, I've never, I'd yeah. never seen. I literally don't even think I'd ever seen a movie with him in it. Maybe one or two. Like I said, because you would, yeah, you definitely would never watch these. Yeah, no, I don't watch rom coms. Like sometimes, just sometimes. It will yeah. just be on TV, and I and I and I just get hooked, bro. Like I'll just yeah. be like, I kind of have to finish this off now because I'm already started it, and I just gotta see what happens. Now. Yeah, and I can't do uh, I can't do rom coms. I don't like the pacing and the Some writing of them. Okay. Of them. Some of them are okay. Uh, um, I can't think of one off the top of my head that I genuinely. Oh, there's another one he did too, like just like, like Heaven. Nope, never heard um, of it. And it, well, the thing is, maybe I've heard of them and I just forgot about them. I didn't like them, or. But I'd like, they're not even ringing a bell. Uh, David, Mark Ruffle is a recently widowed architect moving into a new apartment in San Francisco, but the apartment isn't entirely empty. It's haunted by a ghost of a woman named Elizabeth. Is this in like the 80s school. or something? Oh, well, this is 2005. I told you, he did a lot of like rom-com stuff. Never. All the 2000s uh, look, now stuff. I want to see if I've ever, ever. See, and that's, that's why it's rough too. Cause like, I feel like I have somewhat the same issue with um, Pattinson. Where it's like I'm judging him somewhat, but for me, it's not even his acting I'm basing it on. It's his physical appearance. I don't think he looks yeah, like true, Bruce so. Wayne. I know some people were not happy that. He and was actually, not, Mark he Ruffalo didn't work, his, no, work his way to kind of build himself. Oh, up not for even it. the body type, like Miss Musgrave. I don't think he physically looks like Bruce Wayne. I think Ben Affleck looked more like Bruce Wayne, and I didn't think he looked all that great as Bruce Wayne. Like he didn't. He at least had the uh, strong jaw, right? The line, mm -hmm. but. He was actually too thick. Whereas Pattinson's right. on the other side. Uh, Bill right. was kind of like, meh, but that's because he was really small. Kilmer probably had the best jawline. Uh, just going off jawlines. Uh, all right, let me let me look at this. News flash, poor things. I got to look for before Avengers or whatever, because that's where it is. Like Mark I said, he, he did a lot okay. of stuff in the Shutter, early 2000s. Shutter Island I saw, but that was not a rom-com. <laughs> I don't really remember the role he even did in that one. Though. I don't. Yeah, he was probably a minor to nothing role. Because I don't remember. Yeah, him at I was all. like, I, I seen that too, and I was like, I don't even remember what he did in that. <laughs> but yeah, he. Uh, I did remember he was in. I think he was the police officer in that one. Uh, now you see me. Don't even remember. Now you see me. Which which one's that? That's one? the one. Remember they were magicians and they were like oh, stealing. Okay. They're like yeah. con artists. Yeah, I guess so. Pretty good. I did like I, the first one. First one was good. Yeah, but he just didn't have. It's like like you said, he didn't have a big enough role. He wasn't. Yeah. He was a very like said, minuscule. Then another one's thirteen going on thirty beginning He's again. He's actually been acting for a while. He just never yeah. seems to be He's the like, big guy. And they do seem to be a. Oh no, there's a pretty big mix because you got like Mirror Mirror Three, Destiny and Marty Five, The Dentist, Bloody Money, The Blast. He's really just a, an actor, a general actor. He did do a, a good. It looks like he did a good amount of rom coms in like the two, early 2000s or late 2000s. Yeah, he did. Yeah, because that's when rom coms Date night, were kids are right. Oh yeah, yeah. Early. I know because I wasn't watching movies. I just I, I, I don't know. The like I said, there's some rom coms that are good for me, but uh, you know which one I like. I really like one of my favorite ones is Just Married with uh, Ashton Kutcher. Yeah, and that was Brittany pretty Murphy. good. Yeah, that one's <laughs> all right. But I think that one I like because it's not very typical as far as some of the rom com writing. Like the the it's almost more American Pie ish 
in a lot of the yeah, ways. You could say that, yeah, a little bit in that one. Yeah, too. it's a little wild. And I've always like, and I've always liked Brittany Murphy as an actor. Oh she yeah, and I mean Ashton Kutcher is a, a funny actor. guy. I, I think that also has to do with it is like who's in the movie, right? Does will color if you enjoy it, whatever type of movie? Because like, I'd watch a rom com if it had like, uh, I don't know, Hugh Jackman in it. Yeah, he's done some very out of some. No, he's done I didn't some. Know he would do too. Yeah. Like he yeah. did a uh, musical movie. He's you know, actually he really, like he's singing, and I was like, oh my gosh. He's, he's originally a Broadway actor. <laughs> he's his. He's not originally Wolverine. That's, he's originally cool. a Broadway that's actor. Cool. So that's his preferred style is Broadway acting. He prefers to do musicals and dance and all that stuff. That's like well, yes, yeah, so he's he talked just about did one it a lot recently. It was like two years ago that came out. Oh yeah, seen on TV but but yeah, no, he talks about it a lot. Like that's his. That's where he's from. That's what he likes to do. That's what he prefers to do. He just basically acts in big movies to pay the bills. <laughs> At least that's um, what I've heard him him like go on a couple of times, and that's actually what I've heard is why he won't come back to Wolverine is because he's so busy doing Wolverine he can't do. Uh, Broadways and musicals and things that, like that. Yeah, that, yeah. And I, I have heard to him say on record that he said that he doesn't want to do, yeah, like he doesn't want to beat a dead horse, you know, kind of thing, because he yeah. was at his prime. You know, it's a, at his prime, he did a very good job, ended it off great. That's where he, he said he wants what? to end it. He what? doesn't want to keep going on, and then people are like, "Okay, bro, we've gotten tired of you, bro. We're done with you playing Wolverine. We don't like you as Wolverine no more." So he was saying, "I wanted to end it on a good note, and I ended on a bad note." <laughs> yeah, I totally feel that. And honestly, I gotta give props because he's one of those examples of characters who, at the time, I don't even think there was a big thing about him being cast. But I think just the sharpness, right? Just yeah, right. Yeah. I mean that was pretty much it, but that but that, that's so hard though to find somebody that short, you know, and then who's a good actor, and then who's it's not that, even that, that it's that. it's not even that it's a movie thing. You can't put a short person in a and physical that's visual that's medium thing, and make them as yeah, intimidating. Yeah, if you really yeah. think about it, you really don't see very lot of short people. <laughs> no, it's it's that's why Tom Cruise stands on a box. Okay, <laughs> and I'm not being like facetious or things. It's a whole, it's a mental subconscious thing that you want your heroes to be tall and you want your right your main characters to be a head up and and when you do make characters short, they're very specifically short for reasons like characters yeah. that Danny DeVito plays character right like and you know the characters they're supposed to be short tempered and Napoleon complex or uh, weak or the, like the the guy the uh, the short uh, the small person from uh, Joker, right? Where they're, they're, they play specific roles. And same for really tall people, right? Like, uh, I think of the really tall guy from uh, Rush Hour. Who are you? I'm me. No, he's you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Which I love, too. That was the whole thing. It was like, it wasn't even about him being tall. They just made jokes about their names. It was hilarious. Um, but I think it is funny, because I, I agree that how you see a uh, actor before definitely changes how you see them afterwards like you can't it's 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 like you can't have That's what happens you know sometimes yeah when the actor plays a role it sometimes they they Locking. either can yeah. break or kill them you know i mean yeah. well how it happened to the the what's, what's her name regina i can't remember her name but the one who played in the little girl in the exorcist yeah. linda blair that was linda her name blair yeah she uh, always yeah, played she after, it after that role she could not get anything after that nobody wanted to cast her for anything and this it sucks you know just because she played this and she played a good like she did a good she job did really good yeah she did a but really like, good job but nobody it, wanted her though because and she it's, played that role yeah well and there was a lot of stuff around the movie and right it was the so, whole yeah. concept of the movie it wasn't just the role but i do know what you're saying and it, it is a risk going into certain things and anything really i mean think about typecasting in the sense of daniel radcliffe there's, there's so many different ways to be cast in a type. Whether it's like I was a child actor and so I spent so long doing it, that's all people ever see me as. Um, uh, physical, right? Like I am the dude who always plays every, uh, uh, not Carlos, but like, you know, the, the Mexican cholo oh, in every yeah. movie. I always that forget his name. always plays the, the cholo Hector. guy in every Hector. movie. Hector, his name's yeah, Hector. Yeah, he always <laughs> plays Hector too. Thousand, hundred, or nearly a thousand movies. I think he's played Hector. Uh, maybe not that many, but a lot of movies, man. And so, or you know, Samuel L. Jackson, whose personality and character are just so strong that you just get Samuel Jackson or Keanu Reeves, right? Like, 
if you want a uh, good narration, then you get Morgan Freeman. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, you just get put in the spots. And that's not to say, once again, that they can't break out. I think Samuel Jackson is... I, we, we constantly... I constantly kind of harp on the fact that like Samuel Jackson doesn't play anybody but Samuel Jackson. But it's not that he can't play anybody but Samuel Jackson. That's just what the studios want from him. And I think the I best proof... Uh, Mace Windu, right? I mean, he was a good. He played Jedi. He kind of played Samuel L. Jackson there. A little bit. Yeah, it it was a bit. light version, but it was Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> you got um, the motherfuckers. There. The best example that I can say for sure that I know for a fact Samuel L. Jackson is a great actor who doesn't get to use his acting skills all that much because he's typecast is uh, Kingsman. Oh yeah, that's right. That was, he was good in that one. Very, like very different that. personality. Absolutely not Samuel L. Jackson. Still did a great job of acting, convinced of his character. You know what I mean? Even though he's typecast, I was convinced that right that he was this kind of thing. And it, it's similar for the uh, the other one. What was it? Invincible or no, 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 um, Unbreakable, where he's in the oh, wheelchair uh, or whatever. Oh yeah, he's yeah, the yeah, yeah. When he's I, the, this supposed to be yeah. The, yeah so he absolutely, ones. he absolutely can act and is a great actor and i think people who watch some of our shows might think i don't think that but i'm not saying that i'm just saying he gets typecast he gets typecast to play samuel l jackson <laughs> uh specifically the samuel l. jackson from pulp fiction too not not just uh-huh. anyone uh but yeah no i mean it, it definitely happens and it's rough but i think it's also important for us as like watchers to try and like push it to the side right like and be like all right i need to accept and i'm trying to do the same for like robert pattinson right where i go into this batman movie i'm like all right i'm not looking this as a a him from twilight i just want to see how he does as batman there's no perfect batman every batman had mistakes or was were rough in one way or another right like bale was cool but he wasn't physically big enough to be batman the voices are a little rough they didn't do it correctly and uh he he just didn't have the physicality i think that you needed for batman mm-hmm. um right whereas the, the others have other things right where it's there's like non-realism for a more um too much special effects in some spots <laughs> or the voice <laughs> changer is done wrong again god i was that was annoying but i think they're gonna do well i'm hoping those are great uh i think we're coming up to the last bit do we want to talk some comics yeah or we can Um, i just wanted to say i know i still haven't read it but i gotta gotta get read the the amazing spider-man with the ben riley story that just started up Mm -hmm. um i still need to read the last issue of immortal hulk um yeah i'm so far i'm so far behind on some of those issues but yeah i wanted to read that that last issue but um it's it's a big uh i think it was like 80 pages so i have to kind of get dive into it for yeah, a little bit, at least little, like little bit. 30 minutes reading in the story but um yes yeah, so i just want to read that still i know there's a couple other things that i've been wanting to check out too as well i've been trying to slow down a little bit on the reading because it's just too much sometimes to catch up and read on everything and i just uh just can't do it all sometimes it is, i wish i could i know, really man, wish i could I read everything but uh it's too much sometimes uh let me see here um last week what did I end up reading? I know that Batman Imposter came out, but I haven't checked that out. Um, oh, I read some of the Dark... I read that Darkhold story, which was supposed to come out last year uh, from Marvel, but... Oh, the gotta, Alpha? The Darkhold Alpha one? Or the other yeah, one? Yeah, with, uh, with the Doom and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Scarlet Witch story. Yeah, um, it's, it's funny because it's still listed as 2020, even though it's a 2021 release. <laughs> um... And then the Dark Ages actually is pretty interesting. I did like how the Dark Alpha kind of ended. It was a little interesting to yeah, see. Yeah, no, it was it was the way cool. They look kind of the I, yeah. I was gonna say those are those are basically the big things going on too. I mean, there's a couple little series, and Inferno just started basically a little bit ago. But uh, yeah, Inferno. But they're not popped off yet, and like everything else in Marvel is kind of meh right now. Like even the Wolverine stuff, and like there's a couple things. Like it's Jeff is releasing. I don't know if you've seen that one. But it's based on Gwenpool's uh, 
Landshark or whatever. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, I think I did see that. Yeah, it's so he's that, got that his own series running. It's been doing pretty good. Uh, it's running on the Infinity Comic sub. That's what it was, right? Because it's, it's, yeah. it's on the digital. Okay. Yeah. But it's really, it's pretty good. It's probably the best thing releasing uh, aside from maybe Inferno and some of the X-Men stuff. But I'm going to be honest, uh, Marvel has fallen off the last couple months with, for me at least, and having this feel of pull towards the writing. Um, and then that's well, just the last couple but the last month dc has kind of been popping off on a couple of their things they just started the uh the wayne family adventures which is a web comic uh with like it's just like kind of an at-home thing where you get to see all of the robins and bruce and stuff at the house and a couple of other things um as well as they just started robins uh and the one that I'm really excited for that they just released recently was a one shot called Are You Afraid of Dark Side? Which is like a campfire story. Kids oh, yeah, for the Are You Afraid of the Dark? <laughs> it's cool, man. I, I like it. That. It's cool. I, I like it. Um, but I think they've been upping their game a little bit, some of this stuff. I still don't feel like there's a lot of like long running series that got me very interested. Uh, there was like Daredevil still. Daredevil's been doing good. That's yeah. supposed to be ending oh, though. Oh, Crush and Lobo. Uh, that one's pretty decent so far. Crush and Lobo nice yeah but other than that um generally comics are a little dead right now i don't know why i think we're waiting for another big drop and once again marvel's been off for a couple months dc is off for longer than that they've been basically black label only for a little while and then um yeah i think there was a couple side stories but a lot of them have even been puttering a little bit where i've we haven't i've been seeing as many released every week in the secondaries as i was earlier this year um, I mean, there were there were the the classics, obviously. Like, um, fuck, something's in the chill. You know what I mean? The ones that have been big side ones, but even a lot of those are either on breaks or like, you know, in between things. So it's it's been kind of dead on comic books. We actually picked an okay time. I do think that we there were some things we missed. But nothing. Definitely, I know yeah. the biggest thing right now is the uh, John Camp being uh, bisexual. I yeah, that one and that one was out of yeah. With everyone. And that one's been out of left field. Plus the fact that only super like Super Sons has been popular, but I've honestly never been a big huge piece on it. So like I don't know, I wasn't that impressed with it. The the early chapters were really good, and then after they like brought in Teen Titans, it kind of got like weird. Hmm. Just, just my opinion. Cause then, then they took uh, Damien over to Teen Titans, and so he was doing oh, Super right. Sons and Teen Titans. And what's going on with him too? Isn't he uh, also? I couldn't even tell Some... you. I've been so remember. out of it, and like I can't remember. But I think it's been pretty good. Uh, besides that, I don't think I have anything else unless you wanted to touch on one or two I more things. I got nothing else really so far. I think that was just the bigger news for sure in the comic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, people history. people were freaking out over it. I know the colorist it. who was doing that, that comic, um, who is also kind of a comic skate person, was doing a little podcast. And now he will no longer be <laughs> doing probably most likely the fifth issue or something because he was wow. yeah, yeah his talk tell he was re- giving his opinions the, on shit he should yeah, have been and then he was kind of talking stuff about his you know his work you know people that were helping him create the you know the comic so oh well um, yeah just, so it's kind of it's kind of in bad taste you know it is too um, but I, even beyond bad taste i always tell people like look whether it's right or not if you talk shit about your employer they're gonna fire you so that's what that was, that's what the article said it's from bleeding cool bleeding cool was like it's not that like you know like it, dc cares that if you're a comic skate person like look yeah. at him he, i forget what the person was but he's back in writing yeah um it's that like you said it's that once you start talking smack about your your co-workers or you start talking stuff about like that makes the company look bad or anything like that right. I, I hate to that's when you gotta go bye-bye <laughs> yeah i hate to say it but when you work for like a giant company like that like marvel or dc it's etc you don't get to come out and say yeah the most recent marvel movie was garbage even if you think that guess what you don't get to do if you want to keep working for them right and that's the thing people are like well there's no freedom there of course you have the freedom to say that and they have the freedom to say bye get the hell out of here they, they don't care about your opinions that's not what they're in the business of caring about they're in the business of caring about money <laughs> And so as long as they do, they don't give a shit about your opinions. They want you to smile, 
say it's nice or just say nothing, right? That's also an option. You don't have to say it's the best thing that can be out. Say, oh, I haven't seen it, but you should check it out and give your own opinion. See how easy yeah. it was to not give any endorsement and also not lose my job? <laughs> it's the kind of like, I don't know. And once again, yeah, definitely uh, read that article. It's from Bleeding Cool. I'll have and, to check uh, it out. Yeah, it was the colorist that had something to say about it because he's yeah. also kind of on the comic skate side, which is a whole other thing. Yeah, <laughs> but, comic skate is. We try not to get political here and at all, but that that is comic book, so we may have to address it someday. But I don't know. It's man. starting to get bigger. That's for sure. The movement because now it's starting to because like before when i had, remember i told you to try to look it up a little bit more maybe a year or t- two year ago i couldn't really find it was all misinformation really honestly i yeah. couldn't find like a real good definition of like what a comic skate person is so, yeah no and it and it, it's kind of like that uh just for a general sense and not to talk about any particular things because once again we don't like to be political it's like calling somebody a fascist or calling somebody a um, Antifa. It's not, there's no real definition of those things. They're general terms of like, that people are using to brand and label a group of people, right? Like, it's not, there's no, it, it's not like some dictionary definition or thing. And then once again, usually like wide weird definitions like those are like based on nothing or like randomly assigned and like they don't have a real strict uh definition um i'm trying to think of a good example that's like similar but uh but yeah like if you call it like any most people nowadays they call someone a fascist they don't actually mean that you are for fascism they're just insulting you <laughs> that that's what i mean right all right. Well, I think yeah, that's a we'll craft in there, and then yeah. hopefully we can. I will have to catch up on some more comics for sure. Same. This week oh God, same. See what I can read because I had to finally cancel some. I just told them like, guys, it's too much. Just take this one off. Take the and then it was like, uh, I haven't even read like some for like twelve issues already. And it's yeah. Like, like, do I do do I stay and keep it on, and then I'll catch up to it later, or it's just like. Nah, just just if it's I, I'm getting to the point where it's like if it's not if it's not something that you read the first issue and you're like oh I really loved it really want to keep going then keep going with it but if it's something like I read it maybe a few times and I was like maybe I'll keep going with it and I should, and just you know then that's when I was to say nope cancel that because you're not really into it mm-hmm. you know, I don't want to put the dedication into reading it mm-hmm. um, I'm, I'm the just same way wasting my time to read it and be like why did I waste my time just reading that was a load of crap I didn't like <laughs> <laughs> no, I I absolutely agree. Um, I've I've been the same way for a little while now because once again, there's just so much. Even beyond the money, time, right? I just don't have time to read 40 comics a week of every single thing that comes out. And so if I don't like it immediately, I drop it. If it goes more than like two or three weeks, and I'm just like, either I'm not picking the book up and reading it, or I'm not liking the books I'm reading. I'm just like, look maybe i'll come back when i hear good things about you or when you're finished with the run and i can just kind of like move through you and that's what i was saying too is like if i cancel the book and then i do end up reading the issues i'm like you know what that was a pretty good let me go ahead and go back and right get them again because i have them already so i can always go read them whenever unless i you know get rid of them but but yeah i I absolutely agree you just gotta had to had to trim down the list (laughs) Definitely have to trim down the list because it gets that and then doing toys at the same time. Oof, yeah, I can yeah, imagine. Yeah, it's uh. <laughs> so yeah, I'm trying to uh, balance it a little bit better and then eventually even toys will be trimmed down because even those are starting to get a little bit more expensive with plastic going up in price yeah. as well. well and, so. and even and rougher even on those is toys are even more difficult for storage than comics yeah. are most of the time. Definitely, so. definitely. Yeah, so. I mean, I can have, you know, 3,000 comics and they don't you know now i could put them all in a one little closet and then i have just maybe 50 toys and the 50 toys take up the whole room (laughs) yep depending on the toys for sure man but hey that's cool it's you know and i it's just part of getting older and you know being being more relaxed on it but i think it's it's a good thing and and the industry is doing well it's not like we'll stop well not well but you know it's doing okay i think it's not on the verge of dying anymore our at this current moment. No. No. I feel like yeah. 
Yeah, everything seems to be going good so far. But yeah, yeah other than that, I think uh, that was it then I had to say for today. Cool, cool. I think we're good. Thank you to everybody who watched today. And hopefully we will once again catch you next time here on Comic Convos. Uh, I think with everything going, we'll, uh, should we do an outro video? Or we're just, nah, we'll just end it. We'll, we'll start doing outro videos maybe when we get back onto YouTube here in a while. But uh, okay. yeah, I think that's great. And we'll see everybody next time. If you enjoyed watching or want to support the channel, remember to attack that like button. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, or join our Discord using the link on screen or in the description below so that you can get daily updates on all of our uploads and live streams. We know we're not perfect and we can always improve, so please visit our Discord or comment below with a critique or a compliment to let us know how we can improve ourselves. Finally, if you're just starting for more content, you can become an honorary member of 3D Productions at patreon.com slash 3D and get exclusive access for as low as a dollar a month.